This is the second part of a level one functional skills math paper from NCFE. In this part, you can use a calculator. Activity two, caring for reptiles. Zach is doing an apprenticeship in animal care and management. He's working as an assistant at a reptile center. Zach learns about how to look after reptiles. What is the maximum length of box terrapin in millimeters? So in centimeters, that is 15. We're going to convert it into millimeters. In one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. So in 15 centimeters, there will be 10 times more. So 10 times 15, which is 150 millimeters. The age of a young garter snake can be estimated using this rule. The length of snake in centimetres, subtract 12, divide by 15, and it gives us age of snake in years. An adult garter snake is about 72 centimetres long. What age is a garter snake when its length is 72 centimetres? So, the length is 72 centimetres, which is the space here. So that means we need to subtract 12 from it. So 72, take away 12, gives us 60. Then divide the 60 by 15, which gives us 4. And that's the age of the snake in years. So 4 years. It is important that reptiles are given the correct diet. The calcium to phosphorus weight ratio in their food should be close to 2 to 1. The table shows the weight in milligrams of calcium and phosphorus in one scoop of food. Which food has the better calcium to phosphorus ratio for reptiles? Show you working. So for watermelon, we've got 36 to 9. If we simplify this further, we could divide both of the numbers by 9. So 36 divided by 9 gives us 4. And 9 divided by 9 gives us 1. So the ratio for watermelon is 4 to 1. For cauliflower, we've got 160 and then 80. So what we can divide them both by is 80. So 80 divided by 80 gives us 1. 160 divided by 80 gives us 2. So the ratio is 2 to 1. Which food has the better calcium to phosphorus ratio for reptiles? That is this one. cauliflower because it needs to be as close as possible to 2 to 1. A customer needs to buy a tank for his snake. Zach has this information about the sizes of tanks. The reptile center sells these five sizes of tanks. Which is the cheapest tank the customer should buy for one snake, which is 45 centimeters long? So you're working. So length of snake to the nearest centimeter. And we're looking at 4 to 5, which is in between 4 to 1 and 50. And that means a minimum floor area of 600 centimeters squared. And we know that area is worked out by multiplying length by width. So if we try a medium to see whether 
multiplying 31 by 19.5 gives us 600. Yes, it does. It gives us 604.5. And let's look at the, the one underneath, the one that is cheaper. So that is 23 times 15.5 gives us 356.5 so that is not 600 so medium would be the cheapest one you can of course get large or extra large but that wouldn't be the cheapest one and we're looking for the cheapest Another customer already has a terrapin tank. She wants advice on how many terrapins to buy. When her tank is filled, the water surface area is 6,000 centimeters squared. Terrapins need a water surface area of 1,900 centimeters squared for two terrapins. Then an additional 300 centimeters squared for each additional terrapin. What's the maximum number of terrapins that should advise the customer to buy? So for two terrapins, that would be 1,900 centimeters squared. If we add an additional one, we'd need to add 300 centimeters squared. I could go on and add 300 and 300 and 300 so on until I reach 6,000 but that's going to take me a while so instead I'm going to do 6,000 take away 1,900 and that is 4,100 now I'm going to divide 4,100 by 300 to find out how many additional terrapins can fit in the tank so that gives me 13.6 recurring so in other words there will only be 13 additional terrapins because 14 wouldn't fit that is 13 additional and we've already got the two that we've taken into account earlier. So that is going to make 15 of them in total. At college, he learns about snakes. He reads this data about the lengths of snakes found in one area. The bar chart shows this data, but one bar is incomplete. Draw the bar to the correct height on the chart and label it. So this one in the middle is incomplete. So that is for the length between 30 and 34, and that is 13 snakes so we're going to go up to 10 11 12 13 so up to this point and we've got to keep the same distance between the bars so looking at that we've got one two three four five squares so we're going to go one two three four five and five on the other side so one, two, three, four, five.
and then we have the bar going up to 13 and now we're going to need to label it so put 30 to 34 The class tutor has provided some snakes for the students to handle. Five of the snakes are green and four are brown. Zach is first to choose and picks a snake at random. What's the probability that he picks a brown snake? So there are four brown out of the nine in total. And we haven't been asked to write probability as a decimal or a fraction or percentage, so I'm going to keep it as a fraction. Four ninths. Activity three, cycling trip. Asha lives in Nottingham. She's planning a cycling trip in Holland. Asha plans the trip in two stages. Take the train from Nottingham to Harwich. Take the ferry from Harwich to the Hook of Holland. This is part of the train timetable from Nottingham to Harwich. How many hours does the 1928 train from Nottingham take to get to Harwich if it runs to time? Give your answer as a mixed number. So it's this train that we're talking about. So it will be at Harwich International at 22.58. So 22.58, take away 19.28. There we have 12. Take away 9 it is 3. So 3 hours and 30 minutes. We've got to write this as a mixed number though, so that is three and a half. The return train fare from Nottingham to Harwich is £158.80. Asha has a student rail card which gives her 30% off. How much will Asha pay for a return ticket? So we're working out 30%, which is 30 out of 100, or 30 divided by 100, of 158.80. So plugging this into the calculator gives us 47.64. So that is the discount. So we're going to have to take that away from £158.80. And it gives us £111.16. Asha plans to cycle from the Hook of Holland to Amsterdam. Her map has a scale of 1 cm to 8 km. The straight line distance between the Hook of Holland and Amsterdam is 70 km. What is the measurement between these two places on Asha's map? Give your answer in millimetres. So the scale is 1 cm on the map to 8 km on the ground. So if the actual distance is 70 kilometers, we'll need to work this out. So to get from 8 to 70, what do we multiply by? And we can work that out by going 70 
divided by 8, which is 8.75. So we need to multiply on the other side by 8.75 as well, which gives us 8.75 centimeters. Now we need to give the answer in millimeters. One centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. So 8.75 centimeters will be equal to 8.75 times 10, so 10 times larger. And that gives us 87.5 millimeters. Asha will spend two days in Amsterdam and then cycle back to catch the ferry at the Hook of Holland. The road distance between two places is about 40% longer than the straight line distance. Estimate the actual road distance Asha will cycle in total. Give your answer in kilometers. So we looked at the distance, the straight line distance that was given to us and that was 70 kilometers. Now we need to work out 40% of that. So 40% is 40 out of 100. So 40 divided by 100 times 70 gives us 28. Now we're going to need to add 70 to that to work out the total. So 8, 9, 98 kilometers. So this is an estimate because we've got this word here which says about. So by working out 40% and adding it on top, we've just estimated. We haven't worked out the exact uh, figure. Now that is in total. And We've got information at the top which says we'll spend two days in Amsterdam and then cycle back to catch the ferry. So that we're talking about double 98. So two times 98 gives us 196 kilometers. Asha needs to buy a pair of cycle bags for her trip. She reads an article which says that for a cycling holiday, the cycle bags need to have a capacity of at least 20 litres each. One litre is the same as 1,000 cubic centimetres. Asha sees some cycle bags which each have these dimensions, height 42 centimetres, width 32 centimetres and depth 17 centimetres. The cycle bags are roughly cuboid in shape. Are these cycle bags large enough? Show you're working. So to work out the volume, we're going to multiply height by width and depth. So we're going to do 42 times 32 times 17, which gives us 22,848 cubic centimeters. And we're talking about 20 litres that are needed. So 20 litres each. One litre is 1,000. So 20 litres will be 20,000. So we're looking for 20,000. And this is higher than 20,000. So are these cycle bags large enough? Yes, is the answer. The empty cycle bags weigh 0 0.76 kilograms each. Asha says two of these cycle bags together will weigh less than 1.6 kilograms. Is Asha correct? Explain your answer. So we're going to multiply 2 by 0 0.76 
and that gives us 1.52 kilograms. So that is less than 1.6 kilograms. So is Asha correct? Yes. The cycle bags that Asha buys weigh 0 0.85 kilograms each. Asha fills one bag with clothes. The clothes weigh 473 grams. How much does the cycle bag containing the clothes weigh? Okay, so we haven't got it specified whether we should write the answer in grams or kilograms, so we could go either way. I'm going to stick to kilograms. I've got one of the measures in kilograms, one of the ways. Now I'm going to look at the other one, and that is in grams, so 470 three grams. Now we said that there are 1000 grams in one kilogram. So kg, one kg means 1000 grams. So this is less than 1000 grams, which means less than one kilogram. And I could divide it by a thousand and it's going to give me zero point four seven three kilograms i need to add to this now 0 0.85 kilograms and that gives us 1.323 kilograms in total Asha's instructions say, when you leave the ferry port, go east. Asha is cycling north. How many degrees clockwise does she need to turn to cycle east? So she's cycling north and she's going to need to cycle east. Now that is a right angle there, which means 90 degrees. Sleep in rough, activity four. Every year, local authorities in England estimate how many people are sleeping rough in their area. The estimates for England over the last few years are shown in this table. The data is represented in this line graph. The axes are incomplete. Complete the line graph. So, we haven't got them labelled, the axes are not labelled, so it should be time going horizontally. So we've got years from 2011 to 2016. This is here, nothing else, and we'll show the estimated number of people. So, number of people. So, this point here which corresponds to year 2011, should be equal to 2,181. So, 2,181. So, if we have this as being 2,000, this would be 1,000. This then would be 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, this would be zero, 
let's have a look whether that works for the next year which is 2012 so 2309 yes the next one 2414 and let's check this last one 4134 so that is right Between 2014 and 2017, the number of people sleeping rough increased by 75%. Write this percentage as a fraction in its simplest form. So 75% is 75 out of 100, which is the same as 3 quarters. That would be the simplest form of it. But if it hasn't clicked immediately, you might like to just divide both of the numbers by 5. And that would be 15 over 20 and then again you can divide by 5 and that's going to give you 3 over 4 and that's 3 quarters calculate 75% of 2744 give your answer to the nearest hundred so 75% again is out of 100 times 2744 and that gives us 2058. Now we've got to round this to the nearest 100. So this is the 100 digit. So looking on its right, we've got a 5, that means we're going to round it up. So this becomes a 1, the digit in front doesn't change and the rest of the digits after will become zeros. So 2100. A charity asks people to donate 40 pence a day to sponsor rooms for people sleeping rough. The charity hopes to raise £1 million a year through these donations. How many people would have to donate 40 pence a day to raise at least £1 million for the charity in a year? Use the conversion, 365 days equals one year. So if we divide 1 million by 365, it's going to give us how much need to be raised in a day. So that is 2,739.7. Point seven two six zero two seven and so on. As we're talking about money, I'm going to round this to two thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine pounds and seventy-three pence because of this digit being six. So now I can divide this by forty pence. So. £2,739.73 If I divide this by 0 0.40 because I've got pounds here so I'm going to divide by pounds and this gives me 6,849.325 This is how many people need to donate every day. Now we've got to round this figure because we can't have a fraction of a person so rather than going 6849 so rounding it down i'm going to round this up and i'll explain why because it says to raise at least one million pounds so if we go and round down this would be incomplete. We'd have less money raised, less than one million pounds. But if we round it up, that would be enough. So, 6,850 people. A community group raises money to help people who sleep rough. 
volunteers pack shopping bags at a local supermarket and ask shoppers for donations. The table shows the number of volunteers to pack bags on 32 Saturdays in one year. Use the data to complete this frequency table. So we've got that complete for zero and one volunteers. Now we'll have a look at two, three and four. So for two, we have one here, two, three, four, five, six. For three, we've got one, two, three, four, five of them. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. You could double check by adding all of these together and they should add up to 32. Over these days, the volunteers collected £6,224. What was the mean amount of money collected each Saturday? So, £6,224 divided by 32, because there are 32 Saturdays. So that is 194.5 and in terms of money that's going to be 194 pounds and 50 pence. The amounts of money collected each Saturday had a range of 53 pounds. The most money collected in a day was 220 pounds. What was the least amount of money collected in a day? So the range is about taking away the smallest amount from the highest. And the highest is 220. So 220, take away that amount which we don't know, and it gives us 53. Now, if I take away 53 from 220, it's going to give me the missing amount. So 220, take away 53 gives me 167. Atul is a member of the community group. On a Saturday, he either packs shopping bags or he takes part in another activity. The table shows the probability of him taking part in each activity. Which activity is Atul most likely to take part in? Saying how you decide. That is this one, which is football, because this decimal is the highest of them all. So it's higher than 0 0.35, 0 0.11 or 0 Football is the final answer. And this is the end of the paper.